The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Our guest today will be Storm and Norman Nixon. Uh, Winsky, not Nixon. Norm, Norm, Norm Nixon was a guard for the Lakers. Um, he'll be on at 8.30. Norm N Win Winsky. <laughs> I, I got the Lakers on my mind. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, take a look at the Dax, and we'll take a look at the FTSE here. You'll see that uh, both of these have been in really strong downtrends, had a little bit of a bounce. And that's uh, all it. The, no, it was not President Nixon. It was uh, Norm Nixon was the guard for the uh, for the Lakers. Um, okay, let's move on here uh, to to answer a couple of questions that people have asked us. One is about the uh, the soybean market. Let's just get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. Um, I think we're in the bottoming process here of the soybeans, folks. This is the, the chart for the July soybeans. I wanted to get it up here, and you'll be able to see it. You'll notice that we're having higher bottoms now uh, since the 20th of April. Uh, we went down, and we made a double bottom from the March 16th level, and now we're, we're starting to form a possibly a 135 pattern. In fact, that's what it's beginning to look like. So there is some support coming in. Uh, to the soybean market. Now, if that breaks, then you would get it all the way down to the uh, drop another 35 cents a bushel down to the 805 level, which would make it a three drive to a bottom pattern. But it's got a lot of work to do before it gets there. But the way these markets are acting, we could be there at uh, 805 while we're speaking right now. But uh, this is what the soybean chart looks like. Okay, a couple things that are happening big, and I think this is important, so I'm going to bring it up and show you, and I don't know why it happened, but it happened, and it was a surprise, and I want to thank our friend over in the Valley of the Wind over there in Las Vegas to bring it to my attention, because uh, it was very unusual, folks. I want you to show you the gold-silver index, and uh, this is really amazing, the fact that the gold-silver index made new highs yesterday. And that, you know, when you're looking at gold, $70 under the high, and the gold-silver index can make a, a new high, that really, uh, it, it means something. Either this is a false breakout or um, we're, we're getting ready to go lower. I don't know. So if you're still short the gold, keep your stop working at uh, 17 uh, 28, and then we'll see what's uh, happening with that. Okay, and one other question. Uh, one other question that we had, and that was, uh, oh, here was here was the main question. Uh, the main question is, why is it that I'm a technician, boys and girls? I could spend probably an hour talking about that and the experiences that I've had. But let me let me just show you my two cents worth okay this is just from yesterday i'm not going to give you a lecture of this or that or whatever but this is the stock of the e-mini s p 500 i'm going to get this up here so you folks can take a look at it here and uh, remember this is about the um oh i think it's about the third most active third or fourth most active things after the um, treasury notes and um, euros and crude or something. I think it's right up around number three or number four of uh, the most highly traded thing. It falls in place with the SPY, which is the the SPY ETF um, symbol. But look, look at this, folks. This is going back to April the 8th. I want you to see the ABCD pattern that's there. You see that dark first ABCD pattern? Okay, that measured right to the almost to the exact tick. And then look at the time period between the 12th and the 16th. Look at that beautiful three drive to a top pattern. It, it cannot be any more perfect. You've got a double ABCD and you're setting right at the exact time. In other words, a time up in the AB leg, time up in the CD leg is equal. The ratios are spot on 1.2. 1.618. Folks, you don't have to listen to anything to, to find that stuff out. It's right there on the chart. Look at yesterday uh, in the e-mini S&P. The yesterday's high at 28 
uh, 89 was exactly, and it hit it twice. You know, it broke and then came back and hit it twice, the same number. Now, you can't make that up. So that's why I'm a technician. Look at the low from the um, the 3rd of May, exactly 78% level to the tick. So that's why I don't look at I was listening to Tommy on the show. He was you know, giving those statistics on the... Um, on the deaths from uh, the uh, the virus stuff, and my gosh, I mean, I, if I had to, if I had to trade off of fundamental information or something like that, I, I would go literally nuts. I, I know I'm not too far from the funny farmers it is, but that would really drive me crazy. That's what that's what I'm looking at. I, I think the biggest train, um, the my biggest transition from a technician uh, to a um, to a, from a, from a fundamentalist to a technician was back in back in 1975 when I was uh, you know looking to you know I was getting back in I'd studied the Gartley hadn't traded for almost a year and uh, I was moving into the to being a you know a pure technician and then I started seeing all these reports coming out about uh, you know how oversupplied the soybean market was and yet my two mentors. Uh, Oscar McClure and Dave Nelson were telling me, you know, this is going to change because of the weather's going to do this and the weather's going to do that and buying's coming from here and Russia and there was no China in the in the mix back there in the 70s. And um, I, I was watching that. I just kept looking at the chart and looking at the chart and I'd go back and look at Gartley's book and he said, you know, pay attention to what the market's trying to tell you. And that's what I would, that's what I started to do. And then when it, then when I started to see it unfold, I said, golly, I said, I don't need that stuff anymore. And so you can give me all the information you want, folks, but frankly, I'm just an old cowboy that, uh, doesn't do very much. Hold on. David White just put something here. Unless you, yeah, this is from Richard Wyckoff. Very good, uh, David. Unless you completely discard all news, reports, tips, corporate statements, crop situation, other types of news, you will be unable to get the best results from your market operation. One of the greatest, Richard D. Wyckoff. And you'll get the same thing from Jesse Livermore and some other people, but some people can do this. Uh, they can they can mesh the fundamentals uh, you know, with the uh, market, but frankly, I'm not. And stop and think of this, folks. When we looked at that S and P chart, it's the same as the cash market. But if you look at that S and P chart, that's including all of the Fed operations. You know, they're in there buying ETFs, and you know, they're not. Uh, they're they're nice because they tell us when they're buying them and stuff. But you know, Warren Buffett doesn't do that. So, that's the main thing that I'm looking at and trying to watch it here. Okay, now th here's something that's going to be happening possibly sometime in May. Um, TFNN has asked me to do a one-day, uh, all-day trading session, which I'm going to do. I'm going to include everything that I do, the history of it, how I got there, a little autobiography here and there. And I'm going to do actual live trading in the trading room uh, for the whole day. We'll be trading about six different things. And um, it, I'm usually pretty good at this because I really prepare myself a little bit better when I'm on the when I'm under the gun like that. So we'll see that. Uh, uh, no, I did not know the O'Brien seniors. I knew the kids, but I, I didn't. I, the, the old man never came down to the floor, but I did know the R.J. O'Brien kids because of Rich um, Anderson has a really close association with them. He's been with them for, God, since uh, right before Moses was born. So that's it. So anyway, I don't know what day it's going to be. It'll probably be the end, of, well, maybe about the 19th of May, 20th of May, somewhere in that ballpark. But uh, we'll be trading the usual things. And we're going to take a little break here. We'll come back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, while we're going, I posted two charts. One was for the NASDAQ showing that it went to the exact 786 retracement yesterday. And then I also posted the chart for the Treasury bonds making the 61% retracement guardly yesterday. And we did rally about $1,000, almost one full point off of that. And now we've broken down below that uh, quite a bit. And I believe part of it is because um, Joseph Siegel from the Wharton School of Business in Philadelphia uh, at the University of Pennsylvania has come out and said the top is in for the bond market and uh, it, they're going to go lower. Something about uh, these boats down in St. Petersburg that he wanted to ride in. I don't didn't get the part of the article about that, but it must have been involving the Mr. O'Brien and his fleet of yachts. But we'll see what's going to happen now. The, the bonds have been acting badly. We've talked about this for the last three or four weeks because of the fact we could not get above those 61% retracement in the bonds, and we could not get above the 78 6% retracement in the Treasury notes. So here again, there is a situation where you don't have to know anything about fundamentals, boys and girls. You just look at the chart, and if there's supply up there, they're, you know, they're just going to have to work through that supply. So that's why I've become a technician, and I've been that way. And believe me, folks, um, I, I haven't looked at a newspaper, oh, my gosh, I think since, uh, you know, Dewey B. Truman. Uh, it's been a long time, so I don't really look at it. And um, so that's all I'm saying. I, I, you can be a fundamentalist if you want, but just remember that, uh, you know, you have to look at the chart. Remember, it's the uh, picture of the you know, the, the buyers and sellers are on that chart there. If the prices are going up, there's more buyers. If prices are going down, there's more sellers. Yes, we're hold, Duffy, we're holding Mr. Bost to that number. I believe he said 2681, I believe, on May the 11th. He's coming into the hot seat next Tuesday on May 12th. We'll have Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly. Bring your rotten vegetables because if it doesn't get there, we can throw them at him. Hey, look, folks, everybody's wrong in these markets. The difference between the people that are wrong and the people that stay wrong is a big difference. There's nothing about being wrong. What's wrong is if you stay wrong. That's the whole thing. So try to keep your, uh, you know, keep your thing 
you know, keep your keep your wits about you and use a stop because you, 2625. OK, hey, this is good. He has guts to predict time and price. I think that's wonderful. You know, but it, it, hey, look, he must be pretty good because he's in the top 10 of those uh, the t t t uh, Traders Digest all the time. Hey, here, here's another thing. OK, of the of the top 10 people in the Traders Digest. OK. Um, and I didn't train Tim. He did this all by himself. But uh, four of those ten, you know, they were they've been my students. You know, so they must be something to this technical stuff. You know, that's <laughs> that's all I can tell you. Anyway, you get a chance to see it when I trade live, uh, whenever we do it this later this month. Uh, we'll be looking at bonds, the S and P, the foreign exchange, wheat, uh, gold, and also crude oil. We'll be watching those. And what what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be uh, giving you just a whole information of everything that I've learned through the years, uh, the patterns and where they came from, where the numbers come from, why I use some numbers and why I do others, how I, why, how I use harmonic numbers, and how I set up a trade. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to be looking at uh, those six things, and we're going to find probably somewhere between three and five trades during the day, looking at anywhere between five-minute and 15-minute charts, and you'll be able to follow along with what I'm uh, looking at in real time. And then while the trade is put on, I will take the thing off the air. I mean, not looking at it, we'll start to talk about another market or what we'll do is we'll go in and, you know, give you some information about some other things. I might touch a little bit of, of astrology stuff, but uh, and we're going to do some artificial intelligence, just a little bit of that. We're also going to have a special 20-minute um, segment on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies and which ones might look the best down the road. So that, that in itself will be really interesting. So I'm really kind of looking forward to that. Then you'll be getting some information on that in the next few days, I would imagine. Okay. Um, oh, we got about another uh, eight minutes before Mr. Winsky come on. I'm not sure the exact time, but they will let you know. Uh, I'm sure of that, but we'll do one thing at a time is what we get here. Okay. Here's something from Bill O'Neill. What seems too high and risky at the majority generally goes higher, and what seems low and cheap generally goes lower. That's right. William O'Neill. That was also talked about in the reminiscence of a stock operator. Stock operator. Prices... <laughs> the cure for higher prices is higher prices, and the cure for lower prices is lower prices. And we've seen that happen in crude oil, and we've seen it happen in uh, a lot of other things. So we'll see what's going on here. Okay, I want to give me one second here. I want to see how the markets are operating here this morning. I want to see what's going on here. Had a nice 11-point uh, rally here in the S&P, up around that 2875 level. I've got a really strong interest in the gold down here. Folks, we're getting really close to uh, uh, watch the gold down here at around 16. Oh, it already hit 1687. So keep a, keep an eye on that because that's going to be key support. If we break below 1660 in the gold, folks, there's going to be no question about it in my mind. We're going lower. And as you can see, by the extension that we're seeing now in the Treasury bonds, this market is really starting to uh, accelerate to the downside. You'll be able to see this in just one second when I bring up the chart here. And once we broke that 61% retracement from yesterday, uh, that was, uh, you know, the last train from Boot Hill. That was at 79.22 this morning. We're already a whole handle under that. And that was, uh, you know, you can see here that there'll be a tiny bit of support maybe at the 178 level. But below 178, folks, you know, we're looking at something really nasty in these bonds. Look, look at this. Look at this chart here that you're going to see here on this daily that we talked about just a minute ago. Look at that. We, we stayed at that 61% retracement for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight attempts to get through it, and we couldn't. Now you can see with the thrust coming down, it's heading a whole lot lower. And you can see once we once we break that 177 level, uh-oh, uh, you could be looking at something. Uh, the ABCD structure on this would take you all the way to 59. That's uh, 20 handles. Uh, I wonder how they're going to handle that if it gets there. But uh, they're acting kind of negative. They've been telling us that. And notes told us the same thing. The notes got right up there to the 170 or to the 78.6 level, and they, they couldn't get through it either. So here again, they're telling you what those interest uh, uh, what those spots are looking at. Now, the stocks are still holding up pretty good. Um, 
Let's just give me one second here. I have a question from someone about the gold market. Uh, I'll, the reason why the actual number in the gold where it really turns super bearish for me, and I'm already bearish, as you know, but uh, it, it could become super bearish if we get below 1670. Because, folks, we could retrace all of that move all the way down to 1470 and lower. Uh, because of the way that that market went up to that 78% level. And then yesterday with the G, with the XAU making new all-time high on good volume breakout, I mean, that that looks like a really big trap up there. Uh, so we'll see. You know, one one thing at a time, that's, uh, that's the way you do it. So we'll see. Okay, well, we got another break coming up here. I had one other chart that I wanted to share with you, and I'll get this up here in just one second. And that chart is of the, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Oh, no, 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 no. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. It's a crude oil. This is the crude oil. Here's a crude oil chart. I think we made a major pattern yesterday uh, in the crude oil. Unfortunately, my stop was a little too close, and uh, we did get up to uh, 125 and change. Of course, we broke quite a bit there. So we are in a correction mode now in the crude oil, and then we'll move on to the next uh, few days and see where we get to as far as support. Hey. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, with great anticipation, we have our friend from Naples, Florida, Norm Winsky from Astro Trends on the line. Norm, are you with us? Yes, sir, Larry. Good morning. Good morning to you, my friend. Why don't you take over the mic and tell the folks what you're looking at in these markets? Okay, I got my notes on the screen, hopefully. And so 
when I was last on your show on the 21st of April, I just had uh, the new moon, and we also had that, that was a Tuesday, Wednesday was the new moon, oh, I should say Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, and then at the end of the week there, over the weekend, we had Pluto turning retrograde, so those are the two change in trend windows I'm going to review quickly here, and then I got big stuff to tell you about what's coming up here in the next 8 to 10 days uh, or so, you know. So here we go. I be, I just noticed before we went on the air, I made a little mistake here. Uh, oh, let me go back. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we had a new moon the night of the 22nd, and a new moon in Taurus, the bull. We'll be looking at your usual suspects, financial grains, precious metals, plus also because it's in Taurus, the cattle and cotton. And then at the end of the week, and over the weekend, you had Pluto in Capricorn, Turgeon retrograde. We'll be looking at cocoa, co I'm sorry, cocoa, coffee, hogs, stocks, and tea bonds. So just before we went on the air, I noticed I made a tiny mistake here. This green arrow should be on that side of the bar for the opening, not for the close. And there we go. So it anyway, wouldn't have made much difference. So you can see the market hardly moved at all there. But the next day was the, uh, a very nice low in the cattle. So there you go, near the, near the new moon in Taurus the Bull. Okay. Here's Coco. Coco is Pluto, and Pluto, there you go, over the weekend of the 24th, Pluto turned retrograde. That was a nice low in the Coco. Here's coffee. Coffee, because Pluto's in Capricorn, it, that affects coffee, and therefore, it, but it didn't, it, it didn't, it stopped going down, but you, you wouldn't have made hardly any money. It just went sideways, you know, so there you go. Here's corn rallied into the new moon, and that gave you, you know, I think everybody, I would like to see the corn, these greens, you know, they're kind of in the bargain basement here. Uh, but I'd like to see them get flushed out and make a low. But uh, the corn rallied into the new moon, which is a signal that maybe you should sell it and not buy it. Here's the cotton, did the same thing, rallied into the new moon, made it top there. Here's the gold, it topped also on the new moon. Here's the hogs, that was a Pluto thing. We might remember my call back here in early uh, April uh, over the third of the week, the weekend of the third, when Jupiter lined up with Pluto, and that was a fantastic low, but not so much this time. The the piggies didn't care; they just kept on running. So that's it. So that's a miss. Okay, so here's the silver made a little top there on the new moon. Here's your be beans did the same thing, made a top there near the new moon, and S and P had my two windows there. S and P. Did, the worst, worst market of all these didn't care about either window. It just kept going up, up, up. Here's the T-bonds. Uh, they behave pretty nicely. They made a low on the new moon and then rallied into the weekend. Pluto is associated with bonds, and they made it top there over, over the weekend. And that was a, You had a nice trade there with the, a low on the bonds and uh, off of the new moon and then a rally into the weekend for a top. Here's the wheat. Uh, wheat just kind of was going sideways, so I probably went uh, maybe down a little bit. So that didn't really work out because then, uh, you know, the next day you would have taken out those lows and probably got stopped out and not good. Here's the dollar, though. The dollar was one day ahead of the top in the dollar. Uh, this is absolutely sideways, Aussie dollar. And so I wouldn't have done anything there as I put a red sideways arrow there to show. Well, I don't play sideways. You know, it's Newton's law for every action, the opposite reaction. You can't expect much of a reaction in a sideways market. Here we go. We had uh, the buy, the pound two days late from the low. And, you know, if, uh, the British insist on your being punctual. There you go. So there's a little, little, little joke there. All right, Euro. Euro, we were one day early. That's okay. We were one day early and not, not a lot of big price difference, small price difference. Uh, so bottom the next day with the, in the yen, the good old Uriah, Uriah, we'll try again, reliable yen uh, is uh, probably the most reliable currency for dancing with the moon. There you go. And there it is right there. And then so there you go. All right. Moving on ahead now. Oh, here's a quickie sample of my day trading. Here's Monday. We had the moon. This is I pick things that you can go easily look up. Hopefully, some of my stuff is, is uh, kind of advanced and hard to find. And so, but I found I picked something here that uh, we had on Monday at 2:33 p.m. Eastern time. The moon was 150 degrees to Uranus at 2:33. Well, let's go look at that. See what happened. See if you could have made any money. All right, there's 2:33. There you go. There, my rules say that if you go up into a time. And you do a, you go move up enough, 
then you're going to be looking to sell it. And if you're close enough to the high, you can you can sell it. And that's what happened here. We were within one and one and a quarter handles of the high there, and one short there. And you made. And then I give it six minutes. If the VIX is at the current levels, you get it six minutes. And there you go. Six minutes later, you're up six handles. So you sold at fourteen and a quarter. You're out at eight. So there you go. You made six handles in six minutes, a little better than minimum wage. Okay, here's what everybody's waiting for. This is the big stuff coming up now. Let's back up the truck just for a day or so. Uh, yeah, yes, let's see. Monday night, early Tuesday morning, we had the, uh, just before the opening, Tuesday morning, we had you know, my top things are when the planets hit zero latitude, and also that's the heliocentric thing from the point of view of the sun. That's the up. That's an up and down thing, and you know these uh, planets are kind of like horses on a carousel. They go round and round, but they also go up and down. And when the planets get to a certain, they get to that midpoint at zero. That seems to be a very powerful energy point. Also, the other thing is from the point of view of the Earth, the planets go stop their direction and go, look like they go turn to go retrograde or the backwards or direct, which is forward. And when they stop momentarily. That's a powerful point also. Those are my two top categories of things. And, boy, we got a lot of it this month. So you just had Mercury go zero north. Uh, we made a top yesterday, which was uh, within a day of the Mercury uh, zero lat north latitude. We might have made the high there. We had a nice sell-off into the close. And uh, now we got a new moon, a full moon, I'm sorry, a full moon coming up at perigee. This full moon will be in the sign of Scorpio. And, well, you know, the sun is in Taurus now, so we'll round up the usual suspects. you got your financials, your grains, your precious metals, stocks, and because of the full moon will be in Scorpio, we'll have an eye on cocoa, hogs, and tea bonds. So, anyway, ideally, let's talk about the grains. Ideally, I think uh, you indicated that uh, it would be ideal if the grains could have a nice washout here to the downside, and that would set up probably a nice bottom here in the next uh, day or two, you know, with the full moon. Also, mercury is a uh, closely associated with the green, so we got a couple of big mercury deals going on here. Like I said, mercury was zero north latitude. Then over the weekend, we got mercury at perihelion. That's at perihelion is from the Greek for close to the sun. Then the 88-day cycle around the sun, mercury will be at its closest point. So there you go. You got your corn Gold, because it has to do with the sun, and we don't care about oats. Nobody trades the oats. OJ, soybeans, stocks, and wheat. And then we'll go to the weekend. Also, another thing happening all over the weekend, if that wasn't enough, Saturn and Aquarius will be turning retrograde. Saturn turning retrograde, and Saturn has to do with coffee. It's in Aquarius, so that'll be copper and stocks. And then... Okay. Is that music where we get commercially or not? That's, we've got to pay a few bills. Norm, stay with us, and we'll be right back. Norm Winsky of Astro Trans. We'll be back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Norm still on the line from Naples, Florida. Yes, sir, Larry. Go so ahead, my we friend. When we left off, I was about ready to tell you about next week. Look at all we got next week. It's huge. Uh, starting on the night of the 12th, that'll be a Tuesday night. You have uh, geocentric, that's from the point of view of the Earth. Mars enters Pisces. That Mars is an energizer planet, and that'll go into the into Pisces, which is oil. So watch for a change of trend of oil there, or within a day. And then also that same night, we got Venus in Gemini turning retrograde. And then the next night, the night of the 13th, we have Jupiter in Capricorn turning retrograde. This is huge, you know, and then we've got one more thing to talk about, and then I'm going to kind of connect the dots here because we got sometimes it's easy to be uh, look at all these different change and trend points. Sometimes it's see too too easy to be a bit myoptic and not see the bigger picture. So anyway, we got one more thing here. We got a big the I use the natal chart of U.S. That's when the, the where the plants were when our country was founded on the 4th of July, 1776, and Uranus are going to be doing a very negative thing, 90 degrees to the U.S. moon's north node, and we should, it might get some kind of shock or, uh, there at that time on the uh, right around the early of the 14th or within a day or so of that. So here's uh, here's how I see the bigger picture. Look at all these retrogrades, and, and, and going back to even Mercury at zero north latitude, this is, to me, kind of shades of January and February in that we had big clusters of, of different phenomena. Uh, January had all the plants kind of lined up together in Capricorn. That's the longitude. Then in February, they all kind of five planets, I think, all hit zero lat latitude. And now we got a theme here of lots of planets turning retrograde. And every time that we've had big clusters of anything, as you've gone over many times, Larry, we often get a big turn in the market. So the on the very micro level here, one successive big change in trend after another might get a lot of big whipsaw whipsaws here over the next week. But the bigger picture is this thing might be building some kind of major, major uh, change in trend over the next uh, you know week to ten days. You know, okay. All right, here's the markets that I did not cover. Uh, we got uh, copper coming up with Saturn in Aquarius, Aquarius of copper over the weekend. And then we got your crude oil. I mentioned that. It's coming up here on the 12th. And then also uh, at the same time, a Venus turns retrograde, which will be your uh, all your your Venus markets, cattle, cotton, copper is co-ruled by Venus. Uh, those markets are all uh, coming up on the night of the 12th with Venus turning retrograde. There's your sugar. And there we go. So uh, I think we got time maybe for questions or whatever from the from the Tiger Den. 
if you like, you know. Oh, let me just tell you about before we get into that. Tell you how you know, about my free classes that I showed you a, a, a mini uh, sample of my day trading, and I do I have a free day trading class which I do in about an hour, and then I coach you for three weeks on how to do that, and that's all free with a money back guarantee, of course, Larry. And if they mention your name, they can get double your money back, you know. And anyway, so you can get a and then I also have another class for the swing trading letter too. And I cover about 27 different markets in that letter. So anyway, there's how to get a hold of me on the screen, hopefully. And uh, I'm in uh, beautiful Naples, Florida here. Uh, sunny from Naples, Florida. Everybody in their houses. <laughs> and there you go. And in Winskate, Embark Q, with a Q in the middle there, mail.com. And Skype. You can Skype me at nwinskate underscore one. So anybody have any questions, comments, or good jokes, yes, or what do you got? We have Two questions on the same topic, and that is, would you please go slowly and re, uh, retell us about the importance of these things that are happening on the uh, 11th, 12th of uh, May next week. Please go slowly okay. with that is what they've asked. I will go so. back to that page again. Okay. And, and then we'll, re then we'll, re we'll re redo, replay, re-instant replay. Okay. So starting the night of the 12th, you know, we got big stuff over the weekend, and then they, again starts it up again on the night of the 12th, which is a Tuesday night. AC is after the close. Okay, we got geocentric Mars entering Pisces. Watch your oil market. If you get too extreme in the oil market, uh, the good chance you're going to have a reversal there. You know, a good turn there. We got Venus turning retrograde the, that night also, and that's your cattle, copper, cotton. Stock market responds potentially to all this stuff, sugar and wheat, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the next night, you got Jupiter turning retrograde. That's the biggest planet in the solar system, you know? And that's going to be, uh, well, it's oats, but nobody cares about oats, and it's in Capricorn. So we got to watch for coffee, and so we'll be watching coffee, oats, and stocks, okay? And then you have the morning of the 14th, Uranus is going to be zapping the uh, U.S. natal chart. And so that'll be your U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar for some big change in trend there for that stuff. Did, did, I, do it? did I do it? Did I, did you did a really that? good job. It's almost like listening to a recording. That's perfect, Norm. Now, we have one other question, if you have time. Sure. And that is, what software do you use to look at these astrological uh, events that you follow? I just use a basic uh, Matrix WinStar program. It spits out the uh, the uh, the planets, you know, and also I supplement that. Some of this, not, it doesn't print out everything, so I have to go look up tables and things for things like, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, planets at zero latitude and some other phenomena. It doesn't spit out, uh, you know, Mercury at perihelion. I have to get that out of some books and so forth, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and what is the cost of that program? Do you know, or is it free? I don't, I don't think the one I like, the one I like, I don't think is even available anymore. Yeah, I, I okay. think I'm on version two, and I think they're up to version six now. And I don't like that. I really don't care that much uh, for the later versions. I guess someday my old version there will stop working, and I'll have to adapt to the newer ones. But uh, that's, uh, you know, okay. I think, well, listen, it, I think originally it went for three hundred dollars or something way back twenty years ago or more. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, listen, thanks for joining us, and we'll have you on again next time we come up to one of these big lunar events, which will probably be around, uh, what, seven or eight days from today, maybe on the 22nd of May, sometime right. around that time. If yeah, the we'll folks take a look can at contact it. me in the next day or so, I'm, I, I'm doing my classes this week, so if they want to contact me right away, I can get them into a, a free class. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Well, listen, right. thanks for joining us. And, yeah, we'll, we'll have you back again. Folks, Norm Winsky of Astro Trends, Naples, Florida. Enjoy your time and stay safe, my friend. You too. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to helping you some of your folks. Okay, folks, we got a, about a one minute before the next break. Uh, see, we got the S&P trading about 28.72. We had a low of about 28.66. Rallied up exactly to the 78% level at 
28.82. And now we're coming down to test the 78% level at uh, 28.69. And then we'll see where we go from there. Uh, bonds are still down quite a bit. We're trading at uh, 178.24, uh, the low being 178.16. And we need to hold that level. Or you can see from the chart, the bond chart just looks flat out bearish. But, you know, they could churn at any time. This could be a washout maybe to the downside. But uh, be, be very careful, as always, and always you stop. Because if you will, we just went through the 78% level easily on the S&P. That's going to set up a little bit, uh, little bit lower price in here. Let's just do this quickly right now and try to give the folks what we're looking at early this morning for a, for a potential uh, spot here in the S&P. We got the AB leg there, the CD leg there, and 2860, folks. Right here, uh, we're only seven points away. You can me, we'll be there before I finish this sentence. 2860 is going to be a really key level in the S&P. Going below that is very, very bearish. So uh, keep an eye on 2860. It should uh, it should get there. We'll see. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that have transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, an essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, okay, folks. So uh, one of the reasons, some well, someone's asked me one of the reasons why I'm so bearish. The uh, the gold, and that's basically because the pattern looks bearish. And as you can see from what happened with that uh, GXAU uh, yesterday, but take a look here, uh, what we got from Bill Meridian. You'll notice here he's looking for 
a low coming in here in early May. And here we are, early May. So watch that one very, very closely, folks. This has been a pretty good cycle. And so you want to keep an eye on that. It's going to be very interesting to see what we're looking at. The key level in the gold, uh, I believe, is around 1670. And of course, we got the 1687 today. That might be low enough, but uh, we'll do look at one thing at a time. So that's pretty much what we want to be uh, keeping our eye on. But the fact that that uh, XAU made new highs on pretty good volume, uh, you have to respect that. That's real serious money. And uh, and you remember, there's not enough gold to be delivered against these contracts. It's just the opposite of what happened in the uh, in the crude oil. Remember crude oil, there was too much. And now with the gold, there's just not enough gold out there to uh, deliver. If someone asks for delivery on it, now chances of that happening may be slim, but we'll see. Uh, we're asking a question here about the silver. It's still lagging badly, but you know it's still holding up above 15 bucks, which is pretty good so we'll see if that's going to mean anything or not but uh, I'm really focusing on the the gold market silver is like one sixth the size of the gold market and that's where my operations usually do that I trade gold almost every day because it it op, you know it operates off these numbers so very very nicely but the silver does have a chance if we can get it above sixteen dollars and we'll see folks if this gold is going to go to two thousand or twenty five hundred it's going to let you know it's going to come blasting out of here pretty quickly and if it does you know then it, and remember folks I'm really a nervous short in that those of you who listen to my videos several of you say gee you sound very apprehensive about it and I said well you know running scared and loving it. That's what old Roy Longstreet used to say. So if I had a loss in it, I wouldn't be in it. So we'll, we'll see what's happened. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Also, live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless folks. Please keep your social distancing, wear your masks, and uh, use all your sanitizing things. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow with our guest will be Andy Pancholi, who's the Cycles guy from the Foundation Funding Cycles from the UK. May God bless.